Good evening. It's 6 o'clock p.m. Welcome to our September 15th, 2020 legislative meeting of York City Council. At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order. Um, before we do our roll call, I just want to make a couple of announcements for our public in regards to participation for public comments. We are only accepting public comment on agenda items. And we have various ways that you can participate. If you can participate through Zoom, the ID is 950-715-94656. Again, that's 950-7159-4656. And the passcode is 2020. We also have a public call-in number. That number is 1-301-715-8566. Again, that number is 1-301-715-8592. Please remember that you're going to need to raise your hand for public comment. So if you are calling in, you need to press star nine to raise your hand. And when you're recognized, you need to press star six to unmute yourself. Again, star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute yourself. If you are participating through Zoom, you need to raise your hand and then you'll be recognized and then you can unmute and give your comments. Um, if you have comments outside of public comment for agenda items, feel free to email our clerk at D Thompson without the N. So D T H O M P S O at yorkcity.org for any comments outside of our agenda. I think that's it for participation for our public. I believe the number is on the bottom of the screen. So if you would like to call in, feel free to do so. With that being said, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Rivera. Here. Washington. Here. Ritter Dixon. Here. Walker. Here. Thank you. Next, we're going to take action on previous minutes. These are meeting minutes from our legislative meeting of August 18th, 2020, and our public safety committee meeting from September 1st, 2020. Are there any additions or corrections from council? None. I have none. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving these meeting minutes, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you very much. Our next council meeting will be on Tuesday, October 20th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Agenda items are due by 12 noon on October 14th. Up next, we will have a presentation from JT Han, the president of the York Water Company. And this is to introduce um, our public and so just to give you more detail about our sewer and refuse collection program. Mr. Hand. Thank you very much. I'm gonna see uh, if I can share my screen here. And that should be up in front of everyone. Can I just get a quick uh, head nod that everyone can see my screen? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Well, members of city council, thank you so much for inviting the York Water Company and myself to, uh, to, to join you this evening. I'm very excited to talk a little bit about uh, where the York Water Company is with the collaboration with the city of York in providing sewer and revenue billing services for the city of York. And for members of city council, it's hard to believe, but it, it's been a year uh, since city council approved the agreement between the city of York and the York Water Company through which we provide uh, sewer and refuse billing for the city of York. And boy, a lot has transpired in that year. And I don't need to tell all of you that. Uh, very, very successful amnesty program uh, brokered by the city of York, following with uh, some, some, some terribly tumultuous uh, times with the, with the virus, uh, the, the break-in. All of these things have definitely been influencers as we've rolled out this contractual support to the city of York. But through it all, what we have realized from the York Water Company side is there's tremendous collaboration uh, between the administration, uh, between Mr. Ray, Mr. Hevner, uh, Mr. Given, 
uh, really the entire team and the York Water Company that's brought us to the point where we're able to actually provide the services that, uh, that you have contracted us to provide. So the purpose of this evening's uh, discussion is really to talk to, to the members of the council, but, but more importantly, uh, to use this as a forum for, for me to reach out to the, to the citizens of our White Rose City and to talk to them about the sewer and refuse billing that York Water is providing now uh, to your customers. And as a reminder, these are the city of York's sewer and refuse customers. These are not sewer and refuse customers of the York Water Company. They are the city's customers. And we are operating on behalf of the city of York through the contract that we have with the city of York. We thought it was gonna be an important component of rolling out this uh, billing and revenue services uh, product to have a very, very deliberate public service announcement. And that's what we've done. Uh, for the last three weeks, we have really been pushing very, very hard on messaging to get the word out to all of your customers about what this new bill is going to look like, what their payment options are gonna be, and perhaps an opportunity to look a little bit more closely at their sewer and refuse bill to understand why the York Water Company's water meter reading is so important to the residents of the city as they're looking at their sewer and refuse bill. I think we've had tremendous coverage from the local media and I really appreciate all of their engagement in this all the way up through Biz News and through Central Penn Business Journal. This topic has been covered by the media because the media recognizes that a well-informed utility customer is a good utility customer. And we recognize that if customers understand their bill, if they really understand the purpose of their bill, what's behind the bill, it's easier for them to pay their utility bills. And that's one of the things we're striving for through this revised sewer and refuse bill. So what is the benefit of the program that we're laying out? Well, first of all, we are eliminating significant lag which had previously existed between the city of York's sewer bill and the York Water Company's water bill. A year ago, we would have seen a 45 day lag between when the residents of the city of York received a water bill to the time they would have received a sewer bill for the water consumption of the previous month. It was it's what we call billing lag. Through this process, we are eliminating that billing lag. Now, residents in the city will receive a water bill from the York Water Company. And five days later, they will receive a sewer bill, which is being mailed by the York Water Company, but they are customers of the city of York and that will be their sewer and refuse bill. And they will be able to look at their sewer and refuse bill and see the consumption, the water consumption upon which that is based. In addition to eliminating that billing lag, it also provides a very seamless payment process for the residents of the White Rose City. One-stop shopping, water bill, sewer and refuse bill, same paths, same mechanism, same locations, all in one shop. And we think that's a benefit to the residents of the city of York and to the city's customers, as well as the York Water Company's customers. One of the things that we've realized on the York Water Company side through this process is that we aren't really sure as many people understood the link, the connection between the York Water Company's water meter and the city of York's sewer and refuse billing. So we've tried to take this opportunity to educate the residents of the city that their sewer bill is based upon the water meter reading, which is collected by the York Water Company. That water meter, which sits in everyone's home, whether it's in their basement or, or, or um, immediately outside of their residence, if they have a meter pit, that water meter is what's used to calculate the sewer bill. And by combining all of this into one bill, the way that we've done it, residents can actually see for the first time a very, very direct connection between water consumption and sewer and refuse billing. So how did we go about this? Um, you are all residents of the city of York. I hope that you've all received that first bill. That first bill was mailed by the York Water Company at the end of August. And there were actually two months 
of billing on that one bill. And that bill was sent for the months of July and August. And I don't need to tell all of you what transpired at the city of York and what happened to some of the data, but we were able to work with the city collaboratively to combine July and August into one bill, which was then mailed out to all of the residents and customers of the city. For every thousand gallons that goes through the York Water Company's water meter, a sewer customer of the city of York pays $9.10. It's that straightforward. Now, there are some anomalies, there are some tweaks and turns like that, there are some ordinances which, which, which affect that, but by and large, $9.10 per thousand gallons that goes through the York Water Company's water meter, that what, that's what goes towards the resident's sewer bill. And through the York Water Company's processes, all of your customers, they can pay their sewer and refuse payments at all of the York Water Company's convenient locations, just as they do with their York Water Bill, whether that is coming downtown to our headquarters at 130 East Market Street, whether that's doing it online, whether that's doing it telephonically, or for those individuals that prefer the traditional method, just mailing their payments in. How have we tried to roll this out? We have done, we've done our best to get this information out to everyone in the community. We've published everything in both English and Spanish because we recognize the importance of making sure that we communicate with all of your customers and that is clear to all of your customers. Every bill that went in the mail at the end of August had a bill stuffer, which explained all of this. Um, not everyone reads bill stuffers, as you understand. So in addition to that, we posted it on social media. We posted it to our webpage. We posted it on Facebook. As I said, we've had the public service announcements. It's available on our webpage at several different locations. And I'm really happy that White Rose Community Television is covering this this evening and that it will be taped so that people can go back and refer to it, specifically looking at the addresses of yorkwater.com backslash my sewer bill or yorkwater.com mi factura backslash mi factura either way in order to gain access to all the information they need in one place. We've also posted videos both in English and in Spanish explaining this so people can listen to it if they're a little bit more comfortable listening to how we've rolled this out than they are in reading it and we hope that those uh, video messages have been well received. Anyone that has additional questions regarding their City of York sewer and refuse bill, the information is posted up on the screen right here. And as I said, it is yorkwater.com backslash my sewer bill or in Spanish back, backslash mi factura. General information at 845-3601, which is the same phone number as the York Water Company's customer service department. And that goes for anything related to sewer billing. The distinction is that if it has to do with your sewer line, if you have a backup or you have a question about the sewer line that services your property, those questions are directed to the city of York, general sewer inquiries, or after hours to the city of York's emergency phone numbers. Those questions do not come to the York Water Company. So how did we do? What did the first billing look like? This is a snapshot of the first billing. Again, it was two months worth of Two months worth of bills on one bill for July and August of 2020. The York Water Company mailed 13,732 bills to the customers of the city of York. Total invoiced was $2.7 million, of which a million was invoiced for refuse and 1.7 million for sewer. And we, we don't know if that's typical, a, a typical um, uh, breakout percentage, but we will learn that over time. What what to expect as far as uh, the, the delineation between the, the sewer and the refuse, but a million in refuse and a million in sewer was invoiced through 13,732 mailings. And to date, how are things going? To date, and this is, a, this is effective as of about an hour ago. As of about an hour ago, we've received 4,227 payments We've collected $590,421 of 
of the city of York's money. This is the city of York's money. 43% of the payments, if you look at the pie chart, 43% of the payments were sent to the York Water Company by mail. The conventional, traditional, I put a stamp on it, I remit it, comes back to the York Water Company. But of those 43%, what's interesting, that accounts for 47% of the total revenue collected, which to me tells me that people are using a traditional check, mail, stamp to perhaps avoid a convenience fee or because they're very comfortable just putting it in the mail. They get the bill, they fill it out, they put it in the mail and they send it back. Of the payments received, about 1,400 of those payments have been made online, electronically or telephonically through, our, through the York Water Company's third party vendor. And those individuals who've paid with a credit card or a debit card or an e-check have been ass assessed a convenience fee. And the total for the assessed convenience fees is about 1.7% of total revenue collected. So if you were to look at the total population of, of uh, payments received, about 1.7% is the convenience fee for online payments. We truly have tried to focus on the customer experience for all of your customers. We've seen 1,091 customers visit the York Water Company. Our doors are open. Our doors have been open since May 26th. 1,091 customers to the York Water Company from August 31st to present. That's a pretty good flow of individuals coming in to see us. We've seen everybody in a very safe and separated environment. We really appreciate that all of your sewer and refuse customers and all of our York Water customers have been respectful of the social separation and the protocols we've put in place. And to their credit, we haven't had not a single incident where someone who has come into our facility and not complied as we've asked them to comply. And that truly is a credit to, to, to your customers and to the residents of this White Rose City. They get it. We've also seen about 3,055 3, phone calls since the same period. And that's about double our, our average, which tells us we're getting a lot of phone calls in from your sewer and refuse customers. And we're handling those phone calls. We're responding to them. We do have three bilingual representatives here in person on the phone, or if somebody wants to come in and talk to them, they can talk to somebody in person. And we understand that sometimes our bilingual customers are more comfortable coming into an office to have a face-to-face -face conversation than they are over the phone or trying to do it uh, through, through, uh, through correspondence, written correspondence. We have the bilingual representatives present to help them through that. We have installed an exterior window. We will be taking payments from outside the building. We modified our 90 year old historic building to put in an external window so we can take payments from outside the company. We hope that we don't have to close our doors, but if we do, we always have another option to take payments from outside. So it's like a McDonald's drive-in, customers can come in, make their payments without having to gain access to the York Water Company. And as I said, we've been very appreciative of the mutual respect between the customers and the York Water Company's team. So what are the issues? What issues have we kind of sensed over the first couple of weeks of this? There was definitely some initial confusion amongst your customers. The fact that there were two months on one bill that confused some people. So it took some explaining that, hey, the city had some challenges with their database. This was the easiest way to combine two months onto one bill and have the York Water Company process that for the city of York. I think people understood it after a while. Clearly, the first bills that went out did not have any previous or outstanding balances or outstanding credits on those invoices. And there were some customers that had hoped that that first bill would have shown how much in total they either owe the city of York or how much the city of York would have to credit them for previous payments. We know that the administration is working very, very hard to recover their database so that in the next couple of months, we will work as hard as we can to make sure that we can put the outstanding balances 
that were agreed upon through a lot of work on the city's part through payment agreements and the amnesty program to get those is get get those balances onto the sewer bill. No question that the convenience fee has been an issue for some of your customers. As a reminder, the York Water Company does not charge a convenience fee for our York Water customers, whether they're York Water water customers or York Water sewer customers. So there is a convenience fee assessed for City of York sewer and refuse customers who pay online using a credit or debit card. Uh, so that has that has um, uh, that has been a bit of an issue for some of your uh, some of your customers. As I mentioned, payment agreement conditions, outstanding balances, credits, those have not been posted to the bills yet. And we'll continue to work with the city to make sure that we can get that all cleaned up as quickly as we possibly can. And then finally, we are working through some, some, some address discrepancies. You know, when we transfer 14,000 plus or minus addresses and accounts and names and such from the city of York to the York Water Company, Collaboratively spent a lot of time scrubbing all that data, but even in spite of that, you do come up with some errant uh, addresses, names, uh, account numbers, things like that. So we're going to spend some time over the next two weeks before the next bills go out to clean them up to make it as tight a mailing as possible. That's what I wanted to present this evening. I hope it's been beneficial and I'm not sure if, if there's questions that I can answer or or how I do that, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have for me. I would like Thank to you, Mr. Hand. Um, are there any questions from council? I would just like to commend you um, on a job well done. Uh, I did have a quick question. So my bill came in and I didn't know it was two months. So, um, but it had both. So the bill is generally under my husband's name, but it had both my husband and my name on it. So how did you get that information? So um, we got all the data that we received came from the city of York. So they took their uh, billing database and they transferred it to the York Water Company. We do scrub that through our mailing software to verify uh, addresses, zip code plus fours to make sure that the post office can receive that. So uh, Councilman Rivera, I don't know if that came in from the city of York or through the billing um, uh, kind of uh, remedy with the U.S. Post, Post Service, but uh, it, it's a, probably a combination of both of those. Again, thank you so much for your presentation. I commend you on a job well done and, uh, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. I have a quick question, Mr. Han. Um, you were talking about the uh, fee for paying by credit card over the phone. Were the client informed of that before because some of them were saying they didn't know that they had to pay the fee so if they use their credit cards you're saying they do have to pay that fee every month yes ma'am they do if if they use their credit card to mm -hmm. pay online digitally electronically there is a 1.5 percent convenience fee assessed for using a credit card and and that was uh, you know, we, we, we worked hard through the public service announcement to inform everyone of that. That is on our web page. If someone comes to the web page mm -hmm. and they go in to pay their bill, it does pop up and say, you know, you will be assessed a 1.5% fee for this. But uh, if you feel that we need to do more um, with explaining that, we'd be happy to do so. I, I just think that you should, because they were asking me that about the fee and that they didn't know there was going to be a fee because they were so used to paying um, their bill electronically. And then when they switched over, they, did, they weren't prepared for the fee. What happens if they don't pay the fee? If they don't pay the fee, they can't use a credit card to pay their, their city of York sewer and refuse bill. Okay. So when they when they click submit, I mean, basically, if they click submit saying I want to use this credit card, mm -hmm. it basically says, do you acknowledge you're going to be assessed a 1.5% fee? And once you hit click, that is your agreement to paying that convenience fee. Okay. I'm just asking for clarity for some of our constituents, because they had a problem with this. 
Sure. JT, uh, uh, Council, yeah. if I could hop in for one second, I, I just know that there's one situation that has popped up uh, that I think JT would be helpful if uh, Mr. Hand could address it. Um, uh, JT, regarding that convenience charge, um, is it 1.5 on, uh, on anything up to 100? And then it's and then, and then how does that work? And can you take uh, payments over $100 online? Yeah, uh, Jason brings up a very good point. Uh, so it is it is 1.5% up to $100. And so if you'll, if you'll give me just, just a minute, I don't want to belabor the point, but um, uh, the customer service team here at York Water worked very hard with our third-party vendor to drive the rate of that convenience fee as low as possible. It's 1.5% up to $100. If, if you, the, the average bill should be, should be about $80, about $80 a month. So if someone's paying their bill on time every month, it's an $80 electronic payment, they will get charged, you know, 1.5% uh, of that $80 charge. Now, if they owe $180, they actually have to make two payments. They actually have to go into the system and they have to hit submit for $100 and then hit submit for another 80. 1.5%, $1.50 for that 100 plus another for that other $80. So, so that is the way it's structured. The alternative, and, and again, you know, we're, we're willing to work with the city how, how you want to. What we tried to do is we tried to minimize the cost for the maximum number of customers. So we're not working on the fringes, we're looking at the average. And the average should be about $80. If we were to change the fee structure for the convenience fee, it would drive it up to closer to 2.8% for everybody, which means whether you're paying $80 or you're paying $380, you're gonna be paying that 2.8%. The benefit of the reduced fee structure is to your residential customers, typically who have one property. If you are a multi-unit landlord, you have 50, 100 properties, and you like to use your credit card to pay your utility bills because you get one and a half percent back for using your credit card, we think we should pay more attention to the individual homeowners than the larger uh, property owners who are going to kind of take advantage of the, of, of, the, of the payback through their credit cards. That's why we drove the cost down to one and a half percent. Thanks, JT. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went into a little bit more detail than you probably wanted. But again, it, it's all about numbers, right? I mean, you know, we, we can change the fee structure, but it would result in a higher fee for everyone um, as a result. So the, the key is if your bill is over $100 to make sure that you're, you're putting into the system a payment for $100 and then whatever the remainder of the balance is right. for it to pay online or right. you have to go or you can go into your corner. That is correct. And, and one of the things we've done, Jason, and, and we need to do a better job of educating customers who are paying electronically. If, if your sewer and refuse bill is $103, it's a fictitious number. And you want to use your credit card, make one payment of $100, pay $1.50, and let the $3 carry to the next month. Don't pay $100 and pay $1.50, and then pay $3 and pay another $1.50. Don't, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it's not a prudent expense. I may have missed this, but this is to the mayor. I thought the city was absorbing the convenience fee. And uh, I want to go back and look at that. Um, we had had multiple discussions of how this was going to be set up. So um, as this rolled out and as it kind of got rushed out a little bit because of the attack on City Hall, I definitely have a question about that and I will follow up. I also have a, a second question, if I may, uh, Madam Vice President. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, well, we just got a question online. Is it 1.5% or is it $1.50 no matter what it is up to 100? 
It is a dollar fifty. Thank you very much for that clarification. That's definitely not one point five percent. I'm actually because my bill is usually in the forties, and so I'm paying, you know, two and a half percent by paying online. So I definitely want to uh, have our folks, Tom. I see that you're on on the meeting. Uh, definitely want to have our folks go back and look at that fee structure. Uh, but I also want to remind everybody that. Um, there is no fee whatsoever. Um, I, I can't remember when we went with online payments. It wasn't that long ago. Um, so traditionally, mail-in payments uh, and visits to and visits to uh, the water company were the traditional way of of paying your water bills. And visits to city hall and mailing your bills to city hall were the traditional ways of paying. So if you are um, concerned about any of the fees, you can eliminate any of the fees, except for maybe a 60, 50 cent stamp or 60 cent stamp, whatever it is. Um, or you can, or you can stop the York Water Company, pay both your water bill and pay your sewer and refuse bills at no fee whatsoever. Okay. <clears throat> they can all, customers can also sign up for timely automatic payment. Uh, which is which is an auto pay, and there is no fee for the auto pay either. So through the York Water Company, not through the third party vendor and your credit card, but through the York Water Company. And there's no charge for that. And just so everyone will know, um, we had discussions today, this afternoon with York Water about the convenience fees. So we're looking into that. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Mr. Han, just one more question in regards to the payments. I know we've talked about this before and you've mentioned it. Um, so when you have your York water bill and you have that set up online to pay, can you add your sewer and refuse as an additional account to your login or do you have to create a completely different login just for sewer and refuse? You can have the same login, but there are two different accounts. So you have to treat those two accounts separately. So you, 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 can't, you can't blend those two accounts into one payment. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got to be handled separately. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? Hearing none, thank you very much, Mr. Hand. Um, if you have questions in regards to um, the water company or your refuse bill, please uh, be sure to contact the water company. Uh, the information has been posted on the city's website. It's also on this presentation. And um, I'm pretty sure if you contact the city, they'll direct you as well to the water company. So thank you, Mr. Hand. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone's time this evening. You're welcome. Next, we're gonna move on to our legislative agenda. Up first, we have a final passage of bill number 13, and that's Councilman Rivera. And that was a bill approving the 2019 codified ordinance replacement pages as part of the York City codified ordinances. Is there a motion to approve? A motion. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That motion so carries. And next we have an introduction of a bill and this is making an appropriation for uh, special events in an amount of $20,000. And that's so introduced. Uh, that before we move, I'm sorry, President, uh, Council Vice President. Uh, uh, you, uh, we need to ask if there are any questions uh, on the passage of Bill 13. So, okay. is this is this a consent agenda? No, we have to introduce and finally pass the uh, bills separately from the consent agenda. Okay. Uh, and I have not received any public comment uh, on the Q and A or the chat. Uh, have you received anything uh, on uh, the phone call, Cliff? Nothing here. Okay. I, I, we'll move. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilman. Um, so um, what I had mentioned to you about uh, bill no uh, introduction of bill number three and resolution number 
six that I did want to discuss those? You'll, you'll be able to. She just introduced it, so I'll read it by short title. Um, mm -hmm. Normally, they don't uh, discuss upon introduction, but I'll leave that up to the chair at this time. Uh, but it, it's already been introduced, so I'll just read it by short title, and then I'll let uh, Council Vice President Walker uh, take uh, over from there. And uh, so it's bill number 14, and a bill making an appropriation not otherwise appropriated in the amount of $20,000 for special events with a uh, contract with the parliament. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Rare, you have comments, questions? Yes, so um, I, I, I'm still wanna know how, how we got, now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna preface by saying I'm gonna support the, this motion to approve this 20,000, but I, I'd like to, for the mayor to, to kind of update us on, on how we got here. Um, yeah, certainly. Now this is a bill introduction, so I wasn't prepared with our folks from the parliament. This is, this is not ordinary to be commenting on a bill introduction. So do you yes, wish- that's, that's understood, but we only have one le legislative meeting a month. So we'll allow some discussion if you have any okay. information. I mean, I have information there, the um, Parliament Arts Organization, who is our contracted special events provider, um, as of August, let me see here, I believe as of, as of late August, they had spent over $30,000 on special events uh, planning and preparation for the city of York. And uh, we worked on figuring out which of that, some of that money that was spent, for instance, um, advertising for York Fest. Obviously we had to cancel York Fest. So that money was credited towards next year's advertisement, but that is still money that had to be spent. Um, they also provided um, online events that, that were approved when we couldn't do events outside. And that required payment for um, scheduling studio time, things like that. They did schedule and completed the, uh, uh, the concerts in Cherry Lane, the lunchtime concerts in Cherry Lane. And one major expense was that they worked to digitize some of the filing that had been done by the former special events planner, um, all of which was essentially um, paper. So now instead of having to refile everything every single year, all of that material is now usable and reusable for future events, saving saving a great amount of work. So those are those are a few items that I can share with you off the cuff. Um, more detailed a more detailed explanation. I'm actually looking at the budget. I pulled up the budget right here that I had uh, uh, gotten back in August. Uh, is there something more specific that I could answer for you? Yes. So I want to go back to the RFP process. So uh, Mary retired. Yes. And then there was an RFP process. Um, I don't believe council was engaged. Not that we have to be. Um, was, was there a budget that should have been part of the budget for this? And it wasn't? Um, we have. So Chaz is here who. who yeah. Uh, he did I the help. process. Uh, uh, yes, Mayor, I can kind of step in here and help out with the RFP process. So we put the RFP out. It was October 22nd, um, and we did it the same. We wrote all RFPs. <clears throat> uh, those who were interested and, and we heard responses from, we sent them copies of the link. Um, and then also um, we went through that process. It was out. We also advertised in newspapers, as we do for every other RFP and as well was posted on our city website. We only got three responses back. One group was actually from Texas who responded back to us. Um, obviously the parliament uh, had the lowest bid plus more experience than any of the other groups that we got responses from. Um, so, which is why we ultimately went with them. So we went from paying $60,000 for one individual to run our special events to now paying $40,000 for uh, an actual group, an organization to actually run these events for us. So we have now more resources and we're paying less money. Um, and that's how we kind of got there uh, with the parliament in agreement with them. And this, what we're paying, we're paying that $40,000. The $40,000 doesn't go towards the events. The $40,000 is for the services, is, which is the same thing we did for Mary, uh, who was $60,000 and that was for the services. 
Now, Mary, what she did, she went and fundraised to actually pay for all the events that we had and that took place. And also through like vendor fees and stuff like that. And with the parliament, it's the same way, but we're paying them $40,000 for the services and the rest will come in through uh, fundraising to actually have the events. And, and it is my understanding that you're not incorrect, Mr. Rivera, or Councilman Rivera, um, that there was a line item missed um, between Public Works and the Business Administration in the process last year. Um, you know, with so many line items, it's not necessarily uncommon. Uh, it is uncommon that it isn't noticed until the ninth month of a year. Um, so that is, that is unfortunate. However, um, I believe this money is available from the Special Projects Fund 26. Uh, uh, Administrator Ray, please confirm that. So that is not money out of the general fund. That is money that is available and uh, we will not be uh, sinking into any other expenses that were uh, budgeted from the general fund. Mayor, that is correct. And I would like to point out also, just one more thing, as, as um, Director Green mentioned, the fee is $40,000 uh, due to COVID, even though our contractual obligation would still remain $40,000, um, the special events providers have cut our rate by 50%. And, uh, and I think that it was a very reasonable thing to do that was not required contractually. No, thank you. And and one of the things we had mentioned to you was engaging counsel. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to commend uh, Chaz and and Cal Weary and and and, um, and Colin for for engaging counsel in the conversation. That's extremely important um, when we're engaged. At least for me, when I'm engaged to learn about something that I'm going to be voting on. So. Um, I appreciate that, that they came out and engaged me. So um, you'll, you'll have my vote on this. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions from council in regards to this matter? Okay, this is the introduction. So it will appear on our agenda for our October legislative meeting. Correct, Madam Clerk? That is, that is correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, those were the initial matters. So um, if council is in agreement, uh, we may proceed in a consent agenda. So I would need a motion from a council member to do so. So moved. Is there a second? So I would, is that, is this where I say I'd like to we, discuss? We need a second first. We need a second. 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 Okay. All in favor to proceed with the consent agenda. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, with that being said, we're gonna to proceed to our con uh, consent agenda. So, Council, I'm gonna ask you to take a couple moments to review the consent agenda. There's items, resolutions number one, four, five, six, and seven. If you have any items that you would like to pull, please let me know. Yes, I'd like to pull number six. Number six. Council okay. Vice President, I would like to pull item number one. Number one. For a conflict of interest, I would need to abstain. Okay. Any other items from council? Okay, uh, with the exception of resolution or item number one and item number six, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. I, me, I oppose. You oppose? Uh, I oppose. Why are... For number six, I number six. I understand at Greena's. Um, For oh, we didn't we didn't discuss six yet. It was pulled. Oh, oh okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is, is your change any... now, Miss Judy? I'm, I'm sorry. Is your have you now consented? Have yes. you now moved? Yes. Take that? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Thank you. Uh, any council comments? Any comments from the public for those items? Uh, hold on one second. I believe I see, uh, I saw a hand here. Give me just a second. Uh, Cliff, have you seen? It, uh, there was a hand that popped up for a split second and then it went away. Um, okay. But it, there is a comment for number six, but was, did, was that the one that was pulled? Yeah. Uh, right. So that okay. will come up separately. Yep. Thanks, Cliff. Okay, there's no public comment, Madam Vice President. Thank you very much. So we have item number one, um, Ms. Washington. We need it moved and seconded before any discussion. Oh, I'll make a motion to pull item number one. No, just to move, we just need to move it. So Ms. Ritter Dixon can move, any council member can move it. I move item number one. Move to approve item number one. Is there a second? Yes. Second. All right, discussion, Ms. Washington. Um, I just need to abstain from voting for agenda item number one um, because of a conflict of interest for one of the projects. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. Um, we're gonna do a roll call on this. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Uh, is council okay with is council okay with um, accepting uh, Councilwoman Washington's abstention? Yes. Yes. Any opposed? Okay, so that is a resolution accepting the recommendations of HARB, and I have not received any public comment for this agenda item. Have you received any phone calls for this agenda item, Cliff? Nope, and if we do, you should see them under the attendees list. Okay, all right. In that case, uh, is council ready for me to call for the vote? Yes. Okay, uh, Rivera? Yes. Washington? Abstain. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. And that's so ordered. Our next item that has been pulled is item number six. And this is a resolution um, extending the open container granted to the mayor. Um, this is until December 30, 31st, 2020. And I move to approve this item. Second. Councilman Rivera, did you pull this? Yes. So um, there were some questions. And, and I, again, I'm going to preface by saying I will be voting in favor of extending the, um, the open container through December 31st. But there were some questions in our community of, of the closing of George Street. And I'd like to, to let everybody know, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mayor, um, the closing of George Street is per the direction of the administration, right? So we're not voting on closing, I mean, George Street. We're voting on open container on George Street. So I wanted to kind of clarify that with our constituents, that council is not voting uh, to close George Street. That, the, the, the determination of the closing of the streets is done by the administration. What council is voting on is open container to allow the restaurants to sell alcohol on George Street. Am I correct? That is, that is correct, Councilman. So um, that's, I, I wanted to kind of clarify that with, with, with our constituents because it, it just seems like they think we're voting on the closing of George Street. Um, so. Well, technically, there would be no purpose to the closing of George Street if the if if the permission for me to have open container would not be granted by council. But your vote specifically is for extending. It's not only on North George Street because there are other 
uh, restaurants that are taking the opportunity to extend their dining areas uh, onto the sidewalks of the city uh, in different areas. Are, are there any other restaurants besides those downtown that are taking advantage of this? Um, no, I've offered multiple places uh, the same opportunity, but I have not heard anyone uh, wanting to wanting to take advantage of it. Okay. Any other questions or comments from council? All right, hearing none. Any questions or comments from the public? We do have a question and comment from uh, Mandy Arnold. Uh, who has raised her hand. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Hello, everyone. Um, thank Hello. you for allowing us to speak to City Council. I'm here with my, my husband, um, Chef Sean Arnold. Um, we wanted to express our support um, and appreciation for the open container. As you know, we do own the Left Bank Restaurant and Bar. I'm also a member of the York City Independent um, Restaurant Association, which does represent independent restaurants throughout the city. And we know that this is, is quite essential, especially during the pandemic. Um, certainly without this, many restaurants who don't have the sidewalk space um, have noted that, that they could close with us being one of them. Um, I know the Handsome Cab and Gift Horse have also expressed um, concern if they don't have open container ongoing with the expanded areas. Um, but we do want to express our appreciation for the ongoing support um, and are hopeful that you will pass it um, because through this, um, it, it will really help us get at least through January 1st to see where we are with the pandemic. I don't know if my husband wanted to say anything. No, he says he says he's good. So <laughs> thank you very much for allowing us to speak to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other public comment or questions? Uh, Mr. Robert Godfrey. Mr. Godfrey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. So oh, I, I want to express uh, Mandy's uh, sentiments exactly. Um, <clears throat> um, having the dining in the street has had a huge impact and allowed us to stay open. Um, we are, you know, we do have concern uh, as the weather gets colder, but um, people right now really don't want to be inside uh, because of what's going on. We created something and a <clears throat> and um, we hope to invite you all to come visit us soon, but it's really created something that's drawing people downtown right now. It's probably one of the few things that's drawing people downtown because we have enough space to socially distance. And um, it, it's really had a huge impact. And I have to thank you all for your support. Um, it, it's really, you know, kept us open and um, um, you know when with what we've done revitalizing parts of the city and what have you it's really been essential to our business as I know others in the neighborhood so um, again thank you so much. Thank you any other questions or comments from the public? I see no more at this time. Cliff, do you have any? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Rivera? Yes. Washington? Yes. Ritter Dixon? Yes. Walker? Yes. And that is so ordered. That concludes our legislative agenda. Now we're going to move on. We don't have any requests for future meetings. Is there any council comments? Yes, I do. Um, so I would like to invite everyone to the Spanish American Multicultural Resource Center's ribbon cutting and grand opening on um, October 11th, Sunday, October 11th from 2 to 8 p.m. Um, certainly inviting all the elected officials and, and the administration um, to our uh, event, which will be held on George Street. 
and um, with food and and uh, local acts and bands and uh, a mar mariachi band and a Latin urban band and some local hip hop artists. Um, uh, we're gonna be pretty uh, diverse and, and multicultural. So hopefully I see everyone there on uh, Sunday, October 11th. Thank you so much. What time, uh, Council Member Rivera? I'm sorry. That's from two to eight. And where was it gonna be held at? Uh, 426 South George Street. Okay, and you said it was a multicultural center? The, Sp the Spanish American Multicultural Resource Center. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rivera. Any other questions or comments from council? All right, hearing none, administration, mayor, do you have any comments or uh, updates? Yes, thank you very much. Um, first, I wanna congratulate everyone and thank former mayor Bracey for moderating uh, last night with the virtual visit to York of the uh, revolutionary um, civil rights activist, Jane Elliott. It was really, really um, an incredible event. And I wanna thank everybody involved uh, for having her, her come here and the, uh, um, the interview the, um, is available online on Facebook. Uh, I know through the Parliament Arts Organization, um, go to their Facebook page and you can find that there. If you've never uh, heard of the Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment um, from 1968, uh, it is just an incredible common sense approach to exposing how ridiculous racism is in the world. Uh, so uh, I'd encourage everybody to uh, go and check out that interview and to check out just Google Jane Elliott, brown eye, blue eye, and you will find the original 1970 documentary that really uh, points out the, uh, again, this her common sense approach to explaining to children how ridiculous uh, using any type of genetic color through your eyes or through your skin or anything, uh, how ridiculous that is to uh, treat each other differently uh, because of something that is just genetic. Um, the, uh, we are having, uh, before I get into a, um, an update on the city hall reopening and on the, um, uh, availability of different services. I wanted to make a comment quickly about my very, very good friend, Karen Knoll, a uh, former York City employee. She passed away uh, unexpectedly, uh, hiking in the woods, camping in the woods, doing something she loved. But there is a memorial, the, the, uh, um, the annual Cadoris Creek cleanup is this Saturday at the boat basin and it is from eight to 11 and this year it is dedicated to her. She put so much work into not only helping the people of York um, through her work with the city government, but also supporting the Cadoras Creek Improvement Partnership, my original organization working to clean up the Cadoras Creek and then also uh, helping the Lower Susquehanna Riverkeeper and all their work to protect our waterways and our communities. So uh, please, if you have time, I believe it's gonna be a nice cool morning it'd be a great time to help uh, clean up some trash and trim some weeds along the Cadoras Creek. Uh, so that's at the boat basin, uh, right next to the waterway, 200 block of West Philadelphia Street. What uh, day was that, Mayor Helfrich? That is this coming Saturday. And what time should they uh, be there? Eight, eight o'clock. Thank you. And so as many of you know, the city suffered a, uh, a very damaging attack on August 5th uh, from an individual who uh, broke into City Hall and destroyed much of the computer system, the computer servers of New York City government. Um, our team has worked diligently and incredibly partnering with uh, other businesses, including BIG downtown, uh, to get us up and running again. It took about three weeks to be able to assess the actual damage to know either even what our next steps would be. So that already takes us into the end of August. 
They've been working diligently then to uh, work with uh, Dell and other corporations to have new systems built for us because every every uh, system is uh, has to be built for the needs of the customer. So it's not something you can go buy off the shelf. These are things that have to be uh, procured and assembled and then delivered to us. We've now had many of the things um, delivered to us. Um, one of the things that is still not delivered to us is the, uh, the new phone system that we are going to require. Um, the phone system, believe it or not, our phones are mini computers, just like your cell phones are mini computer. Um, every phone in City Hall has computer components that have to uh, link up with the mainframes, the servers, and our phone systems were already eight years old. They needed replaced over the next two years anyhow, but it's another hiccup in the entire process of bringing City Hall back online. So let me uh, give you some good news. Uh, we hope to have the finance department open the uh, the uh, uh, treasurer's office open by next week so that bill paying and things like that can occur again in person here at City Hall. Uh, we're still doing a lot of work virtually. Uh, as I said, the phone systems are still down, but cell phones and emails are available for everyone. If you know the person you're contacting, you can simply use the first letter of their first name plus their last name at yorkcity.org. In most cases, except for Diana, I don't know why yours is still. Uh, without, I don't know. I, think I don't I, know, they don't like me. We might need to update that. I didn't even realize <laughs> it until uh, somebody said it earlier that yours is still not your name. Yeah. Uh, your name. Uh, but we're, <laughs> we'll work on that one. But in most cases, it's the first initial plus the last name at yorkcity.org. So for some of the services, let me go through here. Large item pickup has been one of the big ones. And uh, I'm happy to say that a large item pickup is available again, but on a limited basis, you must call in from Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And they're not accepting voicemails at this time. This is another thing we're working on, but not accepting voicemails. You have to get them from 10 to 2 p.m. The number is 717-600-7055. Again, the normal numbers for every department are still down. So we are reverting to using cell phone numbers to try and contact uh, the residents and businesses of the city and have them contact us. So it is 717-600-7055. Uh, sewer and refuse, you heard a lot about that earlier. I won't go into that much more, uh, except for uh, www.yorkwater.com slash my sewer bill is the way to get a hold of them. Um, if you're able, uh, I do recommend going to their office to pay your bills because it is one of the most beautiful buildings in the city of York. The interior, the, the Greco-Roman style of, uh, of painting, uh, just the building itself is just incredible. Um, so that is at 130 East Market Street. Permits planning and zoning uh, is all online now. This is something we were already planning, but uh, this helped prompt getting things online uh, even quicker. For years and years, we've heard complaints that all these permits should be online. And now uh, they are available online at yorkcity.org, uh, just our regular, our regular um, website. So permits for building, building permits, temporary food service permits, yard sale permits, zoning determination requests are all online now. So that should make things much easier. And property maintenance inspectors are out on the streets and working. And uh, if you have any reports of violations, you can contact Michelle Diggs. That's M Diggs with two G's, M D I G G S at yorkcity.org for any property maintenance violations. And I'm happy to say um, that I've been receiving glowing reports of, about uh, Ms. Diggs and her work down there and the effectiveness of our inspectors getting out there. So. Um, please make sure that you contact them directly at mdigs with two G's 
at yorkcity.org. Uh, York City Police, their landline is not up, but their uh, non-emergency phone number, the number that is usually 846-1234, that one's not working right now, uh, but you can call them at 717-324-2168. 717-324-71, or I'm sorry, 2168. Uh, any parking concerns, you can contact Cottrell Barnes. Uh, that's K Barnes, B A R N E S, K Barnes at yorkcity.org. Uh, the treasurer's office, as I mentioned, we're hoping it'll be open by uh, next Monday. But if you have any questions, you can contact Treasurer Joe Jeffcoat. That's J J E F C O A T. J J E F C O A T at yorkcity.org. Or if you don't need a receipt, uh, we have the drop box at the back of City Hall that was installed earlier this year uh, for reasons of COVID. You can drop off anything in there, um, your taxes, your parking tickets, anything like that can be dropped off in the uh, drop box, the white drop box at the back of City Hall. Remember though, sewer and refuse is now going to the York Water Company. So do not drop your sewer and refuse bills uh, at the drop box. For general inquiries, uh, as council uh, has been made aware, Philip Given has returned to the position of chief of staff. So he will be available uh, for general inquiries at his email, pgiven at yorkcity.org. That's P-G-I-V-E-N at yorkcity.org. Uh, we're still hiring for some positions, particularly at the wastewater treatment plant and uh, potentially for some uh, community nursing. I know we just made some offers, so I'm not sure how many positions are open there, uh, but Amy Shule is now full-time uh, in that position there. And you can contact her, A-S-H-E-W-E-L-L -L at yorkcity.org. That's A Shule, A-S-H-E-W-E-L-L -L at yorkcity.org. Uh, for my office, mayor's office at yorkcity.org. Um, I think that is most of what you need to know here. Um, economic development, uh, Cherie McFadden, if you're working on opening a business and uh, are needing to uh, interact with us, Cherie McFadden, S-M-C-F-A-D-D-E-N at yorkcity.org. Cherie McFadden, S-M-C-F-A-D-D-E-N at yorkcity.org. Um, all of these numbers and uh, or contacts have been posted on the main page of yorkcity.org. We just updated that. Bill Given just updated that. Also, uh, I believe it's included in the comments on my Mayor's Monday message as of yesterday. Try to get that posted uh, on the yorkcity.org page or on the York City uh, Facebook page also. And I think that is it for me. Uh, anything else I can help counsel with this evening? No, so the, um, the Tidings of Peace uh, trash, trash a thon is this Saturday, right? I am not aware. Um, great. Is, is that in line with the Keep York Beautiful? Um, I, think, I think they're working together on that, um, okay. if I'm not mistaken. But I, have not, I have not gotten the announcement on that. I'm not sure why it's not on my calendar because I always participate in the Keep Your Beautiful Trash Cleanups. Uh, so, um, so that is. And, and, so the Trashathon is this Saturday from eight to noon. And and Councilman, what should people be doing then for to participate in that? I don't want everybody just putting their trash out and expecting. No, he's actually this is pick for, it up. for. I think this is for large items. Um, and so they need to contact Austin Shank over at Tidings of Peace. There's also flyers uh, throughout Facebook with, uh, from Tanisha uh, Wilkes um, and a few others that ha have shared the flyer. So all the information is on the flyer. And I don't have it in front of me, but. Um, and, and, I, and I apologize for that. Yes, Tanisha Wilkes, one of our community ecosystem coordinators um, is, is trying to get the entire city uh, worked up to do cleanups every two weeks, really to get out there and um, 
Um, I don't have the details in front of me on that. Um, however, that is something that I know that she has been working on and we've been working on to connect with the neighborhood associations and others. So we're hoping to build that up over time. I think Councilwoman Ritter Dixon might have some information. Do you? Only that we got flyers in our door um, last week saying that cleanup was going to be this Saturday and they wanted as many people that could participate. Great. And, and I don't have the flyer on me either so that I could show it to you, but it is the Saturday, as Councilman Revere said. Okay, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, no more comments from Council, I take it. All right, well, that concludes our um, legislative agenda for September 15, 2020. We will see you at our next legislative meeting on 10-20-2020 at 6 p.m. Um, with that being said, this meeting is adjourned. Have a good night. Bye.